السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أسعد الله اوقاتكم في هذه الحلقة سنتكلم عن تاريخ الحركة العلمية قبل خمسين سنة تقريبا نشأ معهد المعلومات العلمية المعروف باسم Institute for Scientific Information ISI نشر تقرير مصور بسيط يوضح تاريخ الحركة العلمية العالمية ورغم بساطة التقرير المنشور إلا أننا سنعرض جزء منه للاطلاع على طريقة عرضهم وتبسيطهم وتقديمهم للمعلومة في ذلك الوقت وكذلك لندرك الحاجة إلى يعني ظهور مؤسسات علمية ذات هوية عربية تعمل على فهاسة البحوث العلمية وتقدم تقييما حقيقيا للحركة العلمية لدى الباحثين الناطقين بالعربية لا سيما أن هذه المؤسسات قد سبقتنا بأكثر من خمسين سنة في هذا المجال فلنشاهد التقرير beginning there was the word and the word was shared for the exchange of information between the early men of science depended for the most part on face-to-face -face contact since there were relatively few people active in any scientific field they could get together and talk over their work one, two, three. As the scientific community grew in size and activity all around the world, the word was put to paper. Letters that passed back and forth between scientists became the medium of information exchange. Of course, writing letters was time consuming. To share information with two or three dozen scientists meant having to write two or three dozen letters. So it was no wonder that scientists hailed the emergence of the printing press, because now they could write a paper once and have hundreds of people read it. All that remained was for someone to collect a group of scientific papers, print a cover, and they would create a journal. And sure enough, in the middle 1600s, the first scientific journals were published. The Journal des Savants in Paris. Ceci, c'est très bien and Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society in London. By Jove, this is splendid indeed! It was a popular idea, and by the middle of the 18th century, there were ten journals being published. Through regular use of the journals, scientists found they could complete their work more quickly, Eureka! keep up with new developments, Locate colleagues with similar interests. Dobri den, pane doktore. Right. Prevent duplication of research. And monitor the competition. When there were only a few journals, keeping up with new articles was easy. Even a literature search that covered several years could be made in short order from individual collections of journals. But the number of journals continued to grow to hundreds, to thousands, to tens of thousands from most of the countries of the world. Classifying articles for retrieval became slow and imprecise. To complicate things, researchers needed information from many related disciplines to solve new problems. Even with abstracts and indexes, making full use of the journal literature wasn't easy anymore. Keeping up with newly published articles was rapidly becoming impractical. Mama! And searching back even a few years through the literature was almost impossible. Things continued to get worse until 1961, when a new idea was hatched. The Institute for Scientific Information was born. The fledgling organization took a good look at the literature and at the way it was really used. It felt that with the right kind of innovation, it could deliver the right information into the right hands at the right time, at minimum expense and inconvenience.